hey, uh, I work on the observability team at Spotify. My name is Loren. Um, so I'm going to kind of tell you a story about how we became the observability team that we are now, um, which resulted from this. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> there was a monitoring team at Spotify uh, that disbanded, and we ended up taking over the monitoring stack uh, when we were originally the reliability team. So I think there are plenty of people here who have had to take over a service that wasn't originally built by them or that they didn't originally own, and it comes with its own kind of uh, things that people were used to that owned it before that you kind of like want to change and improve on, right? So once we got this stack, we decided to set a couple goals. Um, we wanted to maintain fewer solutions. There was a lot of stuff that was built at a time when there weren't open source solutions doing the same thing. Um, we didn't want to get paged at all hours of the day and night since this was our first on-call in this team. Um, and you didn't want to get paged at exactly 8 p.m. every Wednesday evening during the Kafka index rollover. <laughs> so we started with low-hanging fruit. Um, we weren't too hung up on using Kafka, honestly. So we just migrated to PubSub. And that gave us a bunch of advantages. Um, we had auto-scaling. It was managed, we didn't have to run brokers, there was flow control on consumers, less infrastructure to maintain, which was one of our goals. Um, we had bashing and compression, and also we eventually ro rolled out protobuf. So this all was like super low hanging fruit that helped us out. Um, so fewer custom solutions. There was a bunch of stuff written before uh, that we didn't necessarily have open source solutions for at the time. So one of them was Pinger, which is just like a simple, um, external system check during using HTTP or HTTPS. And Prometheus has black box exporter, which essentially does the same thing. So we just set that up, and now we don't have to worry about maintaining our own code for a pinger. Um, another example was we had our own front end for the monitoring stack. Uh, it was called Alien. We didn't have a logo, so there's this guy. But uh, <laughs> we heard from a lot of people that were coming to Spotify that they had used Grafana at other companies, or they were like super familiar with it. And honestly, my team didn't have any front-end engineers on it. So it kind of made sense to just move to an open source solution and not maintain our own code anymore. Um, but we still do have some necessary custom solutions, right? So you can't just move everything to open source necessarily, but our custom solutions are open source. So we have Fast Forward, which is our metric forwarding agent, Heroic, which is our time series database. And these were just two solutions that were working for us that we didn't really need to change. Um, and then Almond, which we don't have a logo for, uh, is our alerting daemon that we ended up reprocessing to work with Grafana because Grafana was still kind of reworking their own alerting native solution, and also it didn't really work with our scale. So with Almond, we still got uh, per series alerting, we got a stateless service, and we got a multi-regional service, which is what we needed, and we are hoping to open source that in the near future. So to bring my point together, um, we took over this stack in like August of 2018, and we spent those about six months working on, you know, not getting paged during the index rollovers, getting the service to a point where we wanted to, and by following all those things and using open source solutions, we decreased. It was actually 92%. I had to redo the math, but we went from having like 76 alerts to about six by the end of this whole transition. Um, and also, we have our daily operational load per user or engineer. So over time, and this is uh, not for those six months, but this is like from then to now, um, it's gone down a whole lot. We also moved things to Kubernetes, so that helped as well, so we don't have as much operational load. Um, and then this is just kind of anecdotal. So like, it's not gonna stay at a 92% decrease forever. We uh, prioritized fixing low-hanging fruit and doing what we could, and then you end up experimenting again, right? So it's not gonna stay at like a perfect only six <laughs> pages ever. So this is kind of a more realistic scale of like, prioritize fixing it, make sure your incidents go down, and then you can spend the rest of your time experimenting again and kind of have a big error budget again to use. So yeah, that's it. Thanks for listening.